Now we have to talk about the new topic, double refraction. Suppose an unpolarized light is allowed to pass through a call shaped crystal. The unpolarized light is refracted into two components. One is ordinary ray and the other is extraordinary ray. R1 be the angle of refraction of the ordinary ray, whereas R2 be the angle of refraction of the extraordinary ray. Here R1 is lesser than R2. This means that the ordinary ray is subjected for minimum refraction, whereas the extraordinary rays are refracted more. Ordinary ray obey complete Snell's law, that is mu equal to sin i by sin r. On the other hand, extraordinary rays do not obey the Snell's law completely. Here the value of mu naught refractive index of ordinary ray is greater than refractive index of the extraordinary ray because the value of R1 is lesser than R2. The smaller value of R1 makes the value of mu naught greater than the value of uh, mu e. R1 value is smaller, so mu naught is greater. In the case of extraordinary ray, mu e equal to sin i by sin r2. Greater value of r2 makes mu e lesser. We know that the refractive index mu, which is equal to velocity of light in vacuum divided by velocity of light in the medium. We have the result mu 0 is greater than mu e. Therefore, for the ordinary ray, the velocity of light inside the crystal is less compared to extraordinary ray, the velocity of light in the medium is less because smaller value makes mu naught a greater one. Now read out this. In the figure we see a beam AB, this is AB, composed of unpolarized light approaching a corset crystal at an angle of incident size. This is normal, so it makes an angle I. When entering the crystal, the ray splits into ordinary and extraordinary rays. This is ordinary ray, this is extraordinary ray. The ordinary ray moves towards BC and experiences an angle of refraction R1. Meanwhile, the extraordinary ray moves towards BD and experiences an angle of refraction R2. The refractive indices of ordinary and extraordinary rays can be expressed as mu naught equal to sin i by sin r1 and mu e equal to sin i by sin r2 respectively. In corset crystal, mu naught is greater than mu e since r1 is lesser than r2. Therefore, velocity of light for ordinary ray inside the crystal will be less than the extraordinary ray. It has been observed that the value of mu naught remains constant for all angles of incidence. However, the value of mu e varies depending on the angle of uh, incidence. Ordinary rays have consistent velocity, which means that the velocity of the ordinary ray is a constant, while extraordinary rays vary depending on direction. Now we have to sum up here. When unpolarized light passes through a calcite crystal, it splits into two refracted rays. The first ray obeys the laws of 
refraction and is known as an ordinary ray. The second refracted ray, known as extraordinary ray, does not follow the laws of refraction. However, both ordinary and extraordinary rays are plane polarized. The unpolarized light has its vibration in all the directions. And the plane polarized light has its vibration to only one direction. There are two types of double refracting crystals. One is uniaxial and the other is biaxial. Uniaxial crystal such as calcite, tourmaline and quartz have only one direction in which both ordinary and extraordinary rays move at the constant velocity. Biaxial crystals such as topaz and aragonite have two directions in which ordinary and extraordinary rays move at a constant velocity. Now we have to perform an experiment to understand the concept of double refraction. An ink mark is made on the paper and place a calcite crystal on the paper. Ink dot and place a calcite crystal. This is calcite crystal. Looking vertically above, two images of the ink mark are seen. When the crystal is rotated about the vertical axis, it is found that one image is at rest and the other is revolving around the rest image. The rest image is an ordinary image and the other is an extraordinary image. That's all about the basics of double refraction.